Member statements. The member for University Rosedale. Thank you, Speaker. In the early hours of this morning, I spoke to Bill 307. This is the government's bill to invoke the notwithstanding clause to override a court decision because it doesn't help them. This government could have chosen a more democratic option and passed new legislation to decide how much third parties can spend before an election, just like every other province, but no. This government chose to reopen the legislature, debate over the weekend and violate our charter rights by using the notwithstanding clause in the first time in Ontario's history. Residents have told me loud and clear that this should not be the government's priority. Our priority should be about coming up with a safe plan for schools in September, where schools are as close to normal as possible so our kids can recover the year of learning they've lost. It should be about keeping people housed in safe and affordable homes. Because in my riding, there are people living in streets, living in parks, and they need homes instead. We should be debating that. We should be helping people who've fallen behind on their rent because they followed public health guidelines and they've lost their job or their hours have been reduced. We could be reforming the Landlord-Tenant Board right now. We could be doing a lot of things, but we're not. Instead, we are deba debating Bill 307 because this bill helps you. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Oakville North Burlington. Thank you, Speaker. <clears throat> we have a responsibility to ensure that our elections remain accessible for everyone who lives in our province and free of outsized influence of big money and special interests. As much as we admire our American neighbours, I don't want to see this style of election funding in Ontario. That's why we have reconvened the Legislature to debate the Protecting Elections and Defending Democracy Act so our democracy cannot be held hostage by external forces. Special interests, single-issue groups, or pop-up organizations who want to use money to manip manipulate votes. Section 33 is a clause in the Charter and as such is embedded in our Constitution. Its inclusion allowed for our Constitution to be repatriated. The Charter wouldn't exist without it. Here is what one Canadian said about the clause. It is a way that legislatures, federal and provincial, have of ensuring that the last word is held by the elected representatives of the people rather than by the courts. And I don't fear the notwithstanding clause very much. I don't think the notwithstanding clause deters very significantly from the excellence of the Charter. Who said those words about Section 33? One Pierre Elliott Trudeau. The people should be the ones who decide the outcomes of elections in a fair, transparent process. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Mishkigawak, James Bay. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Je me lève aujourd'hui pour parler. Hello, Mr. Speaker. I'm here to talk about an important situation in the James Bay. Last week, I was talking to the health minister regarding COVID cases in the James Bay communities. Last week, the situation was precarious. 100 active cases in my communities. Monsigny declared an emergency state. A few days later, Fort Albany was in the same situation today. I would like to talk about the Kishishwan community. Last week, they had one positive case. One week later, this community has 133 active cases. Kishishwan is facing an important number of cases and a humanitarian crisis. They have asked for help from the federal government, but is still waiting for support. This community is an an emergency state and needs help today. They don't have any time to waste. I'm asking the health minister and the indigenous affairs minister to work with the community and to support the community to send what is needed and to work with Wahar. Kishishwan needs to be able to turn this crisis and needs to be able to exit the crisis without causing any further tragedies. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The member for Mississauga Streetsville. Thank you and good morning, Speaker. Vaccines are our ticket out of this pandemic, and religious centres in my riding of Mississauga Streetsville are stepping up in a big way to ensure that those who want to be vaccinated 
can get a vaccine as soon as possible. Last week, the Ismaili community at the Medivale Jamaat Khana and the Dawoodi Boris community of the Anjuman Ifakri Masjid hosted pop-up clinics at their congregations. First doses were administered to anyone 12 plus and second doses were administered to 70 plus or those who had received their first vaccine before April 18. Between these two clinics, nearly 2,000 vaccines were administered, providing additional protection from COVID-19. Today and tomorrow, the Hindu Heritage Centre of Mississauga is hosting a pop-up clinic at their congregation, and appointments are available for anyone 12 plus to get a first vaccine or anyone 70 plus or who had their first dose um, of the Pfizer vaccine before April 18. We're making significant progress in vaccinating Ontarians and hope is on the horizon, in large part due to these organizations stepping up to the plate and volunteering time and resources. Thank you to all communities showing the true meaning of the Ontario spirit. I'd also like to take a moment to thank all of our constituents, the Premier, Minister of Health, Solicitor General and our health table for their ongoing work as we safely reopen our province. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much. Member Statements. The member for York Southwestern. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Good morning. The government called us for a midnight sitting, and it has been a long shift for many of us. But, uh, Mr. Speaker, at 2 a.m. in the morning, a personal support worker is making their rounds in a long-term care home. A taxi driver is picking fares up. A factory worker is trying to stay alert, operating machinery after looking after their children during the day, and a homeless person is praying for their safety and trying to sleep with hungry. A lot of life happens outside of nine to five, and in fact, essential frontline workers who have been keeping this province operating during the pandemic work around the clock, seven days a week. We have found ourselves in a rare night sitting, and I have absolutely no problem with that. My problem, and clearly the public reaction Ontario's problem, is that this government under the cover of darkness, like a thief in the night, is trying to take a slash hammer to our democracy and our charter of rights and freedoms. The hard-working folks of York, Southwestern and Ontario want a government that provides real paid sick days, foreseen priorities for hot sports and not just favourite ridings. Real change to the horrors that our elders face in, in for-profit care, along with health care and, and um, at the front line, essential workers not having to work two part-time jobs with no benefits and to make ends meet. Mr. Speaker, there are a number of good reasons to debate at this time of night, and I would be respectfully suggest that the government, overriding the charter to silence opposing for forces, uh, voices, is not the urgent emergency priority needed by the hard-working people of Ontario. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Member Statements. The member for Niagara West. Thank you very much, Speaker. Uh, my riding of Niagara West is one of the greatest value-added agricultural industries in our province, and it is also a rapidly growing area that many people are choosing to make home. I'm very pleased to announce that earlier this week, I was able to announce on behalf of the Minister of Energy that approximately, uh, as part, approximately $4,295,000 has been allocated through the Phase 2 of the Natural Gas Expansion Program to ensure that access to new connections to the natural gas distribution system help make life more affordable in Niagara West. Our government is making good on our promise to deliver affordable energy and expand natural gas pipelines to more communities across this province, including in Niagara West. Speaker. It was a commitment that I promised to work hard on uh, when I ran for election in 2017 as well, 2016, as well as re-election in 2018. Access to natural gas helps more families and businesses find energy savings while also promoting economic development and job creation across Niagara West. Speaker, this particular expansion will account for an estimated 660 new jobs in the region of Niagara. And as part of our government's plan to make life more affordable, I know this government has prioritized distribution across Ontario. This announcement is part of a Phase Two expansion that allocates $234 million to support approximately 8,750 connections in 43 rural, northern and Indigenous communities. I'm proud of a government that's making the investments necessary to keep life affordable and ensure that we can move forward together. Thank you very much, Speaker. Member Statements. 
Member for Humber River, Black Creek. Thank you, Speaker. We are here because this government has recalled legislature to overturn a court order to silence their many critics. Overnight, I took part in the debate and suggested much unfinished business here for the government to take on. The province is still in mourning after a horrific murder of a Muslim family in London in an act of pure hatred. We need real action to stop Islamophobia and all forms of hate, and we need to properly invest in the anti-racism directorate. Speaker, not only do many Indigenous communities in Ontario still lack access to clean drinking water, but the revelation of a mass grave in BC of 215 Indigenous children at a residential school is beyond words. There must be truth and reconciliation now. Long-term care is still broken. We still do not have adequate sick days. Small businesses are still struggling and need real support. So many tenants and small landlords need help so people don't lose their homes. Our schools need adequate investments and a real plan for a safe return to class. The most at-risk communities need better access to vaccines for second doses. Real action on insurance is needed because commercial and auto insurance rates keep going up even though so many businesses have been closed and accidents have been weighed down. We need better operational funding for public transit so people don't have to pack onto crowded buses, especially in a pandemic. The list goes on. Speaker, we have urgent priorities, but the government overriding the Constitution in a desperate attempt to silence its critics is not one of them. Thank you. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Orléans. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker, it would be an understatement to say that the pandemic has wreaked havoc on our society, especially uh, for children. However, in my community of Orleans, a number of individuals have stepped up to help kids in the Orleans Bengals football club get back to normal. In memory of her late husband, Eldej Sr., who loved watching his grandsons play football for the Orleans Bengals, Bonnie Belfoy and her family have made a substantial donation which will ensure that every child can play tackle football for free in 2022. Christos and Krizavci Zagumis have paid all the operational costs for touch football this year, Mr. Speaker, allowing any boy or girl wishing to play and develop the love for the game that they share uh, to do so without needing to worry about the costs. Tammy Kopp, who has over the years shown that she'll do anything to help kids, is cutting off all of her COVID hair to raise money to purchase footballs and medical supplies. When learning of these donations, Mr. Speaker, Wendy Charbonneau leapt into action. She immediately purchased over 150 mouth guards for the kids. In addition to these uh, members of the Orleans Bengals Football Club, I'd like to also highlight individuals from my alma mater, the University of Ottawa, Jeff Frigno and Guy Levesque. Mr. Frigno launched the Maroons BIPOC Bursary, and Mr. Levesque has launched the Samuel de Champlain Bursary for graduating Orleans Bengals students, uh, student athletes. Because of these caring and generous individuals, this not-for-profit club will survive the pandemic, and more importantly, any child will be able to participate and play football no matter how COVID has impacted their families. At times, it takes a village, Mr. Speaker, and I'm proud to rise in the House to express my sincerest thanks and heartfelt gratitude to these individuals. Thank you. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Scarborough, Rouge Park. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Restaurants have been one of the hardest hit during pandemic. I have spoken to local business owners in my riding of Scarborough Rouge Park, and most are struggling. Recently, I visited X Mart on Royal Ander Blower in Scarborough Rouge Park and met with owner Nazir. COVID-19 has impacted businesses, but Nazir and his team stepped up and have been supporting the community uh, during these difficult times. Mr. Speaker, there is cautious optimism of better days ahead. The province has entered step one of its reopening plan. The returning of dining out and in-store retail come as Ontario eases its COVID-19 uh, measures, which now allow up to four people per table or entire household to eat together on outdoor patios. Before the pandemic, Ontario was leading the nation in job creation and made it a priority to reduce red tape for businesses. Now, thanks to the hard work of the frontline care health, health workers and essential workers, we can start rebuilding our beautiful province. Almost 12 million Ontarians have been vaccinated and more continue to be vaccinated each and every day. Nothing is more important than the health and well-being of all Ontarians. To the residents of Scarborough Rouge Park, better days are ahead. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Member Statements, the member for Mississauga East Cooksville. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I want to take a moment to highlight and honour an organization that is very close to my heart, 
The Mississauga chapter of Unity in the Community has been holding an annual food drive to support vulnerable individuals and families for many years. Even though this year was much uh, more challenging than previous year, UIC's members and supporters came together to collect several tons of food items to be distributed around Mississauga to those who needed it. Speaker, charity is at the heart of unity in the community's mandate, and their mission statement to feed the hungry is a perfect example of Ontario's spirit really means. In addition to their charitable work, Unity in the Community also provides support to seniors, women, and youth, and the people who rely on their services always have a place to go for help. I want to congratulate Unity in the Community on their exceptional service in Mississauga and encourage everyone to learn more about such organizations in their areas and even consider joining and helping out if and when you can. Thank you very much, Speaker. That concludes our member statements for this morning.